Alright, I got the uh, crank flange, shoot crank flange. Uh, this is the pre-greased edge, but there is no pre-greased edge really. Uh, this pre-greased surface was not pre-greased. So you're going to need some grease as well, apparently, if you buy this unit. And that's going to go down, according to this picture. And I, I just tried it myself. And the notched edge is, uh, as you can see, it's kind of, they call it to the point to the left. So I guess if you were behind the machine looking at it, it would be. Um, so I'm going to place it down on here like this. And the notched edge is pointing to the left. I'm sure we're going to have to reorientate this. Um, but I'll try and make it match here. It looks like we've got those two holes that are by that arrow there in the front. So uh, I'm going to try and put those as close as I can to the way it is in the picture. And now uh, we'll go on to the next step. Yeah, so the next step, I'm going to have to place the discharge chute facing forward over the chute crank flange that we just put onto the um, machine. Then we're going to secure it. There's three flange keepers and uh, also some uh, bolts. It's all listed in the manual. It's going to be easy to find because it's four number four in the parts uh in the old parts kit hardware kit and we're looking for six of these nut and bolt three of those uh keepers and here's four step four right there gonna need the 10 millimeters yeah socket and wrench so definitely good to have those out from the previous steps I'll take these out I'll try and situate the chute the way we need to and show you uh, how everything gets put together so you basically uh, line the holes up you put the chute on top of the flange you line the holes up there's six bolts and you basically line the holes up insert the bolts all around Two, four, six. These keepers go up from the bottom. Obviously, they match the uh, they match this, this circular uh, shape. So this one would go here, slide it up, and then put the nuts on. We're going to repeat that in all of the uh, the three different sets of bolts that are going through. For the three keepers and then put the nuts underneath to keep them tight i'll show you how it looks when it's finished all right a little bit of a pain in the neck to tighten because they're fairly long but when every when everything uh once everything is tightened up it should look something like this and we'll move on that's this step here and now uh, we're on to the directional chute control. It says to slide the spiral end of the directional chute control lever into the chute bracket. Chute bracket is there. And then we're going to attach the directional chute control lever to the handlebar through the upper holes on the left handle by sliding the bolt through the hole. Okay. Use the curved washer and nut to secure it to the handlebar. Leave it finger tight for easier alignment later. Alright, so into the chute bracket. Well, let me take a look at this. I'll get right back to you and uh, explain exactly what's going on here. End into here, which I did in there and then this comes back and it has uh this is the bolt and that bolt is going to go into the lower hole on the lever as such now this was on it already so this is probably going to be some fine tuning adjustment this slides on the lever 
So you have to slide that down the lever in order to get it aligned here properly. And then uh, it's going to have to slide all the way through into this hole here. And then there's a nut and a curved washer that actually has to be installed. I'm going to take the parts out, put it all on, and show you exactly uh, how this goes. All right, this step is like this. The curved washer here, the nut, everything is still is loose. I did, and I suspected I'd have to, I did have to loosen up the top nut and bolt on the uh, control panel in order to get this here wiggled into place uh, through the hole in the back. And once that's done though, now on this, this end here, it's gonna have that uh, hole all the way through. So uh, they want the flat washer that was on this step in the kit on first, and then this clevis pin. Um, cotter pin is what I used to call it, but uh, I guess it's properly called a clevis pin. A little difficult with one hand to do this, but that's it. Once it's secured, I'll just make sure the pin goes on facing that direction. Yeah, that's good enough. Let's see, pin. Yeah, they show the pin through the top like that. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yep. And now uh, we're going to probably uh, next step is probably going to be tightening this stuff up and getting it adjusted properly. So let's see. Make sure the spiral at the bottom is fully engaging with the chute crank flange and tighten the two bolts on the chute bracket. So let me go take a look at this and uh, I'll get right back you to you. See this wasn't engaging with this chute flange. That's what they're talking about. So the spiral, this spiral has got to engage with the gear or the notch on the flange and then we can tighten up these two nuts and bolts. Make it nice and tight against here so that when the spiral turns it'll turn the, the chute. Uh, and just make sure I got this adjusted properly before I actually tighten it and I'll show you when it's all done. Alright, so this is what they mean by basically fully engaged. It's tight up against this notch here, the spiral. And then, uh, although the sound isn't pretty, you can see how it works. And next up, probably be tightening up the top. This top part adjusted. I'll do that now. Okay, so of course, this here is a different size. This nut is a 13 millimeter, but I tightened it up nice. It seems to clear this uh, engine guard the best if this is pushed all the way towards towards the handlebar. So I back this nut out almost as far as I could make sure that the curved washer is sitting flush on the bar and uh, tighten up this nut and now we don't hear much noise but the chute moves uh, so this step is done feels good and uh, go on to the next step the next step the next step here is the skid shoes we want the machine on a level and solid surface I'm going to lift this machine up so that the scraper blade is an eighth of an inch above the ground. So they want an eighth of an inch clearance. Um, so they're telling you to use a piece of cardboard about half the thickness of the cardboard that the uh, snowblower was shipped in. You know, I found one, I measured it, I put it under there, it's about an eighth of an inch. Um, and that'll give it enough clearance. We're going to 
install the skid shoes on the sides they're showing you the orientation the way you put it and they also say uh, there's two different bolts here the shorter m820 bolt should be in the front holes so m820 as you can see here those shorter ones times two are in the front the very front most holes and then the longer ones go in the back and uh, this is step six so here's all the stuff we need here I'll go ahead and start that and we'll pick it up from there. There's the skid shoe there. Shorter one here in this spot. You can see on the inside, maybe. Yeah, there you go. So that's the shorter one there. The longer one's in the back over there. They have a square shape to it that locks it into place. You can see it here. That square there locks it into place on the housing so that you can just use a ratchet on this side on the nuts. Uh, so obviously the nut is on the outside. The bolt goes on the inside. I'm gonna tighten them up now. We've got the cardboard there and the skid shoe is not resting on the cardboard. So that allows it the eighth inch clearance. Tighten them up and show you how it looks. And there you have it. All put together to go. Uh, this was the final step. The skid shoes. I still have the cardboard under there. I can pull that out. The machine's fairly easy to lift up, actually. And uh, we should have clearance. Yep, I can see the daylight under there. So, uh... I think we're in good shape. I'm going to read the manual a little bit more. You can see the daylight. Oh, it does look a little off center. So I'll have to check that adjustment. You do want it even, obviously. So I'll make sure that this is level, the ground that I'm on. I'll read through the manual a little bit more, getting to know the machine. And I believe we're going to have to add the oil that came with it. The engine oil make sure there's engine oil in there obviously and then I'll uh, try and start her up obviously the hardware kit is pretty self-explanatory it goes step by step in number order and it tells you the tools you need so uh, you're gonna need the 16 millimeter wrench or socket 16 millimeter must be the same as 5 8 because they were I used the 5 8 and it was pretty tight uh, you don't want to strip anything so if you have the 16 millimeter go with it you're going to need 10 millimeter wrench and probably wrench and socket for sure. Um, you also 13 millimeters on here right now. This is the 10 millimeter socket and uh, you know another ratchet uh, as, along with the uh, 13 millimeter socket. Again, tells you everything on the hardware kit that you need. I did also need uh, adjustable wrench, uh, some sort of pliers. Uh, or another yeah if you had two adjustable wrench it'd be wrenches it would be even better adjustable wrench and a five millimeter it said allen key and that uh that should do it i'll uh do the start up take you through the final preps before actually starting it and i'll get back to you right after i adjust these skid shoes properly making sure i'm on level ground level surface and that we have a an eighth of an inch clearance under the uh, front skid plate of the snowblower. I'll readjust those shoes and we should be good to go.